Good, beautiful people i'm your host king line of locks no video no gameplay video today i wanted to take it back and do something I've, i used to do on the channel i wanted to do again um a review uh i have a stockpile of movies that i have seen and i just haven't had a chance to do any of them but i keep watching these movies so when i do have time and today's movie we will be reviewing is halloween ends it's the last supposedly last movie of the Halloween series with Michael Myers. Now, I am a big slasher fan. Like, I, I love, but the old school fast slashers, right? Like the the Michaels, the Freddies, the Chuckies, the, the Michael Myers, and Jasons. There we go. I can't forget my man Jason. Uh, slasher movies, right? And so I missed the third to last or I think I missed the third to last Michael Myers movie where uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's character officially killed him off right you thought he he was dead they had a good satisfying ending and then two years ago they gave us like Halloween returns and it was the story of Michael coming back and this motherfucker was raw in the movie like he's coming through the burning build burning building and slashing motherfuckers up and killed everyone in that movie right everyone that tried to go up against him he had the whole town that movie was fire now I should have did a review for that movie, but I was like, you know what? The the movie was fire. You know, they have what would happen if a whole town went after Michael. And I might, uh, yeah, and if the whole town went after Michael. And I might do that again. Because, like, that movie was raw. Um, the ending, I don't know. Like, I, it helped with the whole he's magical. But, like, what the fuck? And then we get Halloween Returns. Halloween Returns is the movie right after uh, Return of Halloween where Michael survives the brutal beating of the village or of the townsmen. Basically, all the townspeople, after he survived the last night, which they don't really explain too much. It's just, you know, he just he just can't die. His hatred, you would think his hatred keeps him alive. Anyway, no spoilers. His hatred keeps him alive. But without further ado, let's get into the review of the movie. Um, like I mentioned, it's uh, directly right after her Halloween Nights. That's the name of the movie. The last one was Halloween Nights. This is Halloween Ends. Halloween Nights was a banger movie. I enjoyed it. Um, Halloween Ends. We're gonna get. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna get into it. Um, and so, like I mentioned before, they the whole village, the whole townspeople tried to kill Michael. They weren't able to to do it, and he goes off and he. Uh, kills a pivotal character in the in Jamie Lee Curtis's life. Don't want to spoil it because I, I guess I'll, I'll I'll do it again. I might do the second one. You know what? Fuck it. He kills his he he kills Jamie Lee Curtis's daughter. Right? Like that was the ending to the last movie. He kills her, and so in the the start off of this movie, he kills that bitch again. Respectfully, respectfully, he kills her again. This motherfucker. Right? This chick decided to wait in Michael's old house. Sit, stand where he stand. How dare she? How dare she stand where he stands? And then just wanted to look out and see what the fuck that motherfucker was looking at. And then Michael pops up from behind and he guts her like a fucking fish, right? That's crazy as fuck. It really is. So that's the that was the beginning of the first of the first couple of minutes of the movie. Then we go back in time to like 2019, right? We start off as a babysitter named Corey. And Corey is um how do you say he's como se dice um a bit of a nerd, right? He's a little bit of an outcast and he goes and he takes care of, he goes to babysit for these rich folks. And this kid is a little piece of shit. Um uh, he starts terrorizing Corey, telling him about the story of Michael and how the how Michael went out and killed babysitters 
And when the little shit trapped him in the closet, um, Corey was trying to get out. And he Spartan kicked that fucking door open, kicked the little son bitch over the guardrail, and he splatted his head all across the pavement. And not a pavement, but on the bottom stairs. Like, they lived in a mansion. So he kicked him off the top stairs, and he fell down and splat. And I'm not going to lie to y'all, I did chuckle a good grip. Like, I love going to movies by myself because, like, when there's nobody there because then I can laugh a little bit when I'm not supposed to. And watching that little motherfucker fly over the door, the guardrail and then splat down, oh, I got a good hearty chuckle out of that. Not going to lie to you. We get the Halloween intro. And so after... After Michael, after Michael had somehow survived his outing with the townspeople and goes and kills uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's daughter, people are now believing that his power is anger. And he feeds off of that in the fear of people. That's what makes him strong. And so now that everyone is terrified and everything, people are now out killing each other because the anger or the hatred of Michael is now seeping out. I, I wasn't so much of a fan. I will say the one thing of Halloween nights and Halloween ends that I wasn't a fan of is that they they depicted Michael's powers and that it like it, not only did it came from people's fear of him, but like it was oozing out of him and it was infecting everyone else. Like in the last movie, we had motherfuckers out there killing each other, killing a um an inmate that was that it was um an inmate that was special. Okay. He he was he he wasn't all the way there. And they were attacking this man and scaring him off because he looked different. They thought that he was Michael when he wasn't even Michael. And he killed himself. They have people out here just killing each other because they're just terrified and they're scared. Uh, we got Jamie Lee Curtis, survival of Michael, not once, not twice, not three times, kind of four time, four time, four time, four time champion, um, writing a book. She's uh, describing her life as to what happened post uh, Halloween nights and her story. And it's, a ne it's the next bestseller. Got an Oprah Booker sticker on it. Got an Oprah book sticker on it. There we go. That's the word. Um, and we fast forward over to back to Corey, right? Uh, Corey is out of jail. Corey got out of jail because it was an accident and he decided to become a welder. At the time, we were getting a lot of information on Corey. So I was like, they're going to make Corey like the next Michael. And I didn't like that. Like, I was like, okay, they're, they're giving us a lot of backstory on Corey. He's a bit of a loner. He, he was like pretty stocky for his age. And I was like, you know what? This motherfucker, they're going to try and do the passing of the torch. Like around this time, they were doing that with some movies um, where killers are being like passed off. Like, I, I don't know the one I was thinking of, but there was like a, there was like a pattern of this, like just killers just passing, like passing the torch, so to speak. Uh, and so I was like, they're going to make Corey the next Michael. And I didn't like that. I really didn't. Corey is introduced into, uh, the family, Jamie Lee Curtis's family by her, uh, granddaughter. And that also further cement the, the like, okay, this, that cement the last little layer. I was like, this nigga is going to be, he's going to be pivotal. He's going to be the next Michael. And I was like, Ugh. He, I like, I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I guess the, the, the best part about like my silent killers is that I don't want to know your backstory too much. Like, like I guess back then with Jason, like he, he, he was again, special needs, you know, he drowned. And so then that's why he's killing people. Boom. I understand that Michael, he was just darkness incarnate and like, you know, boom, I understand that Freddie and Chucky, they don't, they, they talk a lot. And you know what? I can't be mad when a motherfucker's killing me. If you can make me laugh, you know what? So fine. But like my silence protects, I don't like when the my, my silence killers, I don't like when your backstory, you're a little bit more talkative and you're a nerd and you're just like, you're just like the, the kid with the trench coat at school. I, I don't like that. That, that, that pulls me away from it. Like you don't seem, you don't seem scary. You're a school shooter, but you don't seem scary. But you know, that was just me. That was just me. So come to find out that the reason why Corey got a job as a welder is because his mother is laying pipe down. Um, and you know, he, she does it so well that she gave, you know, 
got her boy a job and a bike and a bike. So he's able to go to and fro uh, from a place and he has a job. So, you know, you know what? If your mother really loves you, you go out of jail, she'll be able to get you a job. That's all I'm going to say. And then we cut back to Jamie. Jamie is at her book signing and she is bombarded by some survivors of the last movie. Uh, the black woman, and I believe it was the um, old black woman that died gruesomely. I'll, I'll mind you, uh, Michael was in his bag with that one. That was right after he got done killing a bunch of uh, firefighters. He then goes and kills this old woman. Again, sorry, sorry. Like, I, like I'm, I'm, I'm glazing. My bad, my bad. But um, her daughter came up to Jamie and was like, you know, how dare you survive? But my mother died. And it kind of fucked with, it fucked with uh, Jamie's uh, character because she was like, you know, I, I did everything I could. Y'all don't understand. Before Halloween Nights, the last movie, she dropped a fucking building on this nigga. It, they were inside the building and he was in the, in the basement area, but she dropped the building on this nigga and he came out the fire like this shit ain't nothing to me and then proceed to, bite, to fight firefighters. Like, not only did you have smoke inhalation, but then you go and fight firefighters. You understand how strong you have to be to be a fucking firefighter? They, them niggas fight fires for a living. You gotta be stronger than that. So, and he took out like five of them. That was crazy to me. Anyway, that movie was good. We're, we're gonna do a review on that movie because that movie was good. That was a good movie. Jamie Lee Curtis's granddaughter, which I, I do apologize for not remembering her name. She was not really that pivotal, pivotal pivotal of a character she was really just the love interest that's how like they moved her down to um but yeah jamie's granddaughter uh is smitten with Corey. she takes him to the club and we see the most uncomfortable white people dance ever that's like that's up there with poetic justice bad white people dancing that's that, that's bad but i digress and that's when Corey is having a fun time he's enjoying himself he's forgetting that he he technically, technically murdered somebody's kid, but you know what smacks him back to reality? The mother of said snot nose brat. She appears and she is drunk off her ass and she is talking to Corey about how dare you be out of jail while my son is dead. And it bums Corey out because he he wasn't trying to, you know, he was trying to forget all of that. Like it was an accident. He didn't mean to kill the kid. The kid was a little shithead and he locked the door, but no one wanted to believe him until they realized it was an accident. So as Corey walks away and he goes for a walk, we get reintroduced to some bullies. I didn't mention them back in the last, uh, when they first interacted, but when Corey got out and he was driving his little bike, he got us to a gas station. Uh, these, these high schoolers, this nigga is, is fresh out of high school, right? He's, he's a, he is an adult. He is an, a, a whole adult, a whole adult gets bullied by high schoolers. I think they're like seniors, but like still, he gets bullied by high schoolers. And so these high schoolers, they find him again and they're like, hey, you know, you and that old woman, Jamie Lee Curtis, have popped my tire and I saw you at the the truck shop. Cause it was, he was, he, he did, uh, the oldest, the oldest, coolest friend that had the money took the car over to the wielding stop where uh, Corey was at. And so that's how he kind of knew where Corey would be at. I don't know how he asked around. Maybe the uh, the boss that's plowing Corey's mom maybe told him. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, they find Corey and they start bullying him some more and they have him over the edge of this bridge and they threaten him to let him go and one motherfucker was, was playing too much and let him go. And Corey fell down and he smacked his fucking head on these stairs. But he did not die. He did not die, but he was taken by something. What was it? Michael. Michael took him down to the, uh, into like this old underground area where you would see fucking, uh, alligator, not alligator, crocodile be at in that old Batman, uh, Arkham Knights game. And he was, he grabbed Corey and I'm assuming, this is what I'm assuming. In the scene, it shows Corey being grabbed and him looking Michael in the eye and Michael looking him in his eye, you know, that one good eye that Michael has left, I guess, and passing his essence or his spirit or his anger. I don't know what have you. He passed something on to Michael. I mean, he passed something on to Corey. Again, they don't explain what it was. You're just supposed to read in between the lines and he's like, he's grabbing him and he's looking him and he's like... <gasps> And I'm guessing they're they're saying like he's gotten like 
he passed his essence on. At this moment, I was really believing that they're making, they're really making Corey to be the next Michael because how they played it off is that Michael's body, Michael's body is, had been so damaged from the fight that like he can't fight anymore with his body. So I'm like, okay, I guess they're saying Michael learned how to pass his spirit to a newer, a newer model. And I was like, okay. Um, so Corey goes back to, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's house and takes his, takes her granddaughter and they go to a party. Uh, just so happened that the party has the, the, the college kids again, not even college kids, the high schoolers that has the high schoolers there. And Corey proceeds to kill the one that tries to, that, that tried to kill him. And he kills, he proceeds to kill that kid, right? He, he kills that kid. And then out of nowhere, Michael is there and when he kills Mike, when like when when Corey is killing the kid, Michael is like getting aroused or turned like he's getting turned on. Like he's like he's being he's getting activated. Like he's just like shaking and everything. And they're like, I'm guessing Michael like Corey killing Corey committing the kills is powering up Michael. Like I said, I, they didn't explain much. It's just you had to see. Corey kills someone and then Michael just like, ah, and like, I'm like, okay, this is a little weird now. They're, they're like really on the nose that like Corey is the next Michael. And I was like, this, this you're, you're doing too much. You're doing way too much. Allison, at this moment, I think we're like in the, like the, the hour mark of the movie. I just wrote her, her name down. So like her name, Jamie Lee Curtis's granddaughter's name is Allison. So Corey is trying to turn Allison over to the dark side. And it was like, yeah, you know, if you, my power already is strong, but if we combine our power, we can bring Michael back. And she's like, I don't really want to do that. Like that nigga went out and actually killed my mother. Like, why would you think I want to do that? Ew. And that's when Allison's old boyfriend, the police uh, officer came, comes by and is like, hey, you need to leave because you're freaking her out. And Corey's like, you know, a backup bitch and like smacks him. Like he don't, she don't, he don't really smack him. I don't remember what caused the, the interaction, but we're going to say it. We're going to say it. Like he, he smacks him and then runs off like a little bitch. And so the police officer is chasing him. <clears throat> and as the police officer, police officer is chasing him, Corey leads the police officer to Michael into the cave that they're at while Michael is like dying and shit to like, to like help him get stronger, like to help him kill. And so he takes him down to the little cave. Michael is just there like dying basically. And that's when Corey comes from behind the guy and he kills the guy. And then as he just like barely has the man dying, he's like, he brings him over to Michael. And he's like, yeah, get him, get him, get him. And so Michael takes his little, his, he got like, he's missing some fingers from his old fight. So he got like this hand. He takes these, these two fingers, his strong arm, and he jugs the, the motherfucker like a couple times and dies and kills him. And then like, he gets hard again. He act. He gets activated, and he's like, ah, yeah. So like, uh, apparently, we're going with the fact that every kill Michael ha does or gets is it turns him on. It, like not turns him on, but it makes him stronger. So the more Michael kills, the stronger he gets. So right now, with him killing people, and then he passes his essence on to Corey, so that way when Corey kills people, he gets stronger. They have two bodies. Um, up under their name. So like, I guess they're like sharing the power, but like you really never see it benefit Corey. Like Corey got a slash on his hand and that shit got infected. Um, uh, Michael got shot, bashed in his head. And he, he's like, he's okay, but he's not there. Like it's, it's, it's bad. Like the, this movie should not have happened. Um, and I don't like to see my heroes get old and like seeing Michael get old and then get decrepit and have to rely on the weird kid to get his kills, his meals. It's not, not something I like. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I didn't really like that. They're, they're teasing, they're, they're teasing what would have happened if Jamie had fell for Michael, um, back in like the, the older movies where like Michael would try and like convince, I don't know why he would do that, but he would try and convince like Jamie, I think it was either the Rob Zombie version, the Rob Zombie version where he tried to convince Jamie to come over to the dark side. And it, I, they're, they're, this is the road they're going with. So instead of it being Michael and Jamie, it's now Corey and Allison. And they're hoping that that, that, that connection will give Michael more power or give Corey the power that he needs. Like they're going with this connection and magic. And 
I know that Michael has, in some iterations, Michael does have the power, like he has spirit, he has supernatural powers of, um, of like his clan. Like, I don't know the name of it, but I'll put it down here. But like in some iterations, he's just a strong ass motherfucker. And so in this one, they say like, he's like, he's just a, he's just a man. He's just a man that's just powered by anger like he's basically batman but like people believe that actually fearing him gives him more power and like for some way down the line he believed that shit and so now when he's killing people and they're afraid of him he he gets high off that shit basically he's getting high off of killing people and getting stronger in his mind and so during this time um cory and and michael go out and kill some more more people and Jamie's starting to no notice something about Corey. Like he's starting to he's starting to show some signs of darkness. Um, when the father of the boy uh, the, of the boy Corey had killed came by and saw him. When he first saw him, he saw a, a boy that felt resentment for what he did. He felt like he he had did something very truly wrong, and that he was just trying to atone for it. And then when the father saw Corey recently. He just saw darkness. Like he didn't even know what he was looking at. The, the boy he saw was no longer there. And Jamie was like, that's the same shit people kept saying about Michael. And so she, she caught, uh, she appeared in Corey's house. Like the house that the, the boy used to live in is run down. Um, and no one lives there. So Corey has been staying there. Jamie popped up in there like fucking Batman. It was like, Hey, um, word around the street is that you know michael's alive and that uh you and him are going around killing people and Corey was like yeah i did that shit i did that shit yeah yeah and you know what i'm gonna get allison and we're gonna do that shit together all three of us and jamie was like i'm not gonna let that happen and Corey was like let's see if you try and he gets up and she's already gone like fucking batman i promise you i was like since when can jamie lee curtis move like batman this woman in the last movie didn't do anything because in the other movie she was carrying that shit on her fucking back but the last movie she didn't do anything so i'm like i don't see her being able to do all that move that quickly but i let that shit slide um Corey is now upset about what Jamie's character has said. And I think her name is like Lori. I do think her name is Lori, but I'm gonna call her Jamie. I like her as Jamie. Anyway, so Corey was so pissed about what Jamie has said. And so he went to the source. He went back to Michael and was like, hey, I need more power. And Michael looked at him like, what the fuck you want me to do? I, I, I'm missing fingers. And you talk about you want more power. And then like, he's trying to, he's like with motion in and Corey's like pushing him up against the wall. Like, I need more power. Give me this mask, nigga. And Michael's like, no, I ain't giving you my mask. And so they're fighting, right? They're fighting. This adult, fresh off of high school, adult is fighting Michael Myers, going one up with him. I'm at this moment in this movie like, you're telling me I'm watching my goat. I'm watching one of the goats, the Mount Rushmore of slashers get taken out by a 20 something year old, 20 something year old. I want you to know there is a special scene of Jason, the OG killer, right? The OG killer, big daddy, Jason Voorhees going toe to toe with uh boxing's finest not really boxing's finest but a boxer nonetheless when he went to new york and he was meh, meh, he was taking the hits like it was nothing had waited till old boy tired out and then socked his shit right right freddy he goes one-on-one -on -one with jason yes he loses, but he you know he still goes one-on-one -on -one with jason even fucking chucky can go you know he can go like maybe a half around this nigga michael didn't last none more than like 30 seconds 30 seconds he knocked him down took his mask and and his blade and walked off like damn near he could have went and took he could have took him out his outfit and his mask and walked off like how dazed and confused michael was it took michael at least two different scenes to come back and i was upset i was like i don't like how long it's taken michael to get up it's like it's like in that old wwe 2 like smackdown versus raw 2017 where like, when your whole body is red and you got the the uh the cpu just walking around you like you're he's not gonna pin you he's just walking around and you're like <laughs> trying to get back up and you won't get up that that's what it was that, that's basically what it was i didn't like that 
Dex first mask kind of yeah kind of easily it was kind of easily I didn't like it I didn't like it at all so at this point at this moment Jamie is trying to tell uh trying to tell Allison that hey Corey is evil you need to leave him alone and she's not listening she's like no this is a good man I found me a good one this man is has done nothing to me and I love this man and she was like no you don't love this man this man is evil and she wasn't trying to hear that and so she was like you know what fuck you uh, grandma and I'm gonna leave and saying that damaged Jamie to her core how dare you this woman had did everything everything for you and you tell her to go fuck herself since so you know what she went upstairs she loaded her revolver she called 911 told him that there was going to be a an incident shut the door a little bit and proceeded to you know uh pers persona number two herself you know just so we thought so we fucking thought you actually think you actually motherfucking think that Jamie Lee Curtis would kill herself. You thought that fuck. No, she waited because she knew Corey's bitch ass was going to be there. And that nigga waited by the door to hear the gunshot. So when he thought that she sprayed her brains, she was like, you thought I was going to shoot myself and shot that little motherfucker. And he fell off the stairs and hit his head and they were fighting for a little bit and she was like you're not gonna get out of this he's like oh you think you're gonna beat me and he's like if i can't have allison nobody can and allison starts coming out the door and this motherfucker stabs himself he was like if i can't have her nobody can't and then falls and dies like he he's dead so all that build up for that character all that like that that exposition that that backstory him beating one of the goats to take his outfit he offs himself i'm like okay um so michael is is teetering come he's coming back he's already they already showed him like dragging himself off the ground I'm like, okay, well, maybe Michael scene will probably give us some closure to this. Cause this, this, this is dog shit right now. We have the, one of the, you pass the torch on to, uh, a, a, a motherfucker. Like that's the nicest thing I could come with that wouldn't give me demonetized, but like a motherfucker. Like, and so I was upset about that. Corey frames Jamie, but the murder of him, Allison believes that she did it. And so she runs off. Um, and so as she runs off, Michael comes back. Finally, he takes his mask and he try. And as he's taking his mask, young blood wakes up. I call him young blood now because like he's, you know, it's, it's terrible. Michael, you should have did better. You should have vetted your, your, your predecessor better. But like this motherfucker wakes up. I give him points for waking up, but then Michael proceeds to kill him and then takes his mask back like he should have. Anyway. And so now we get the final, final, final showdown of Michael versus Jamie Lee Curtis. And as they're fighting, it's not as good as the first fight and it's damn sure not as good as the second to last movie that they were fighting in the burning building. But eventually, Jamie was able to get the upper hand on Michael and pinning him to the table. And once he's been pinned to the table, she cuts his, his uh, artery in his hands, making him bleed out. And then he's still fighting. Like this nigga is, is, is bleeding out like Moses and he is still fighting with Moses, like Jesus, and he's still fighting. And then she proceeds to cut him in his neck and I think stab him in the heart. Um, I don't think she may stab him in the heart, but I do know she slit his throat. And then he's said to have been killed. Uh, it said that like at this moment, they're like, he is finally dead. And so they do an APB all point bulletin. I think that's the term for it. But anyway, I call it APB. And let people know that, hey, the evil has been killed. And they tort they carry Michael's body on this like SUV and drive all local, uh, like all the way across to a meat grinder. Not even a meat grinder, like a like a car compressor grinder. And they carry his body all the way there and everyone is following down. Like y'all like the, the the turnout to watch this body get crushed is impressive, but not nearly as impressive as when they were out trying to kill this motherfucker. Like, I don't know what happened. How, what, how did the population had died down to the point at which people aren't coming to see evil incarnate's body get grinded up, but they're willing to chase evil incarnate's body, like evil incarnate supposedly across a hospital. I don't know how they got to that conclusion, but anyway, they follow, uh, Jamie, 
to this grinder and they push Michael's body into said meat grinder. And it is said that he is com confirmed dead. Michael's story should be over. You know, he can't come back. Y'all didn't say that he had powers, really. Y'all showed him to be weak. Um, at this moment, after taking a beating from the last movie, he's just a regular man. So with that being said, they say that the movie should be over. Um, killing off any sequels. I don't know. Because they were talking just recently <clears throat> about there being another month, another uh, Halloween movie, which I don't know if they're doing his old, like his, like going back in time and doing something like during that spray moment, like that little old uh, in between moments is trying to give another pump out another video of Halloween, but I hope they, they just end it. Like if, if, you, if anything you reboot it, but even then like the Rob zombie version of it, I really wasn't a fan too much of that one. Um, like I'm at the point now with my slasher movies, my old slasher movies, just leave them like how they are. I like them how they are. They haven't really been able to make a good one in a long time. Like, hell, we have Chucky. You have a Chucky series now <clears throat> after Mark Hamill's uh, version of Chucky. And don't get me wrong. I love Mark Hamill. Like, he, he Luke Skywalker, you know, we like this. Uh, but his version of Chucky just wasn't doing it for me. Uh, and then they have the series of it, which they actually have the original voice actor for it um, and some of the other characters. But it's just, it's just not the same. But all in all, that movie was mid. I didn't like it too much, to be honest with you guys. I I watched it because it was a Halloween movie, and I love a good Halloween movie. The last one was really good. The one before that, the ending was amazing. Um, but this one, it did not, it didn't cover, it didn't like catch me like I wanted it to. Especially watching my, uh, especially watching one of the fate, one of my favorite killers get bullied by a school, basically by the school shooter. Yes, I understand that he was old now and that he just survived a beating from the townspeople, but they they painted him to be very, very weak. And if that was the route they were going with, cool, let, let Corey be the next Michael Myers. But even then, they have Corey kill himself. So I'm like, he's a bitch. I don't like it. So yeah, this movie was mid, but let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you enjoyed the Halloween ends movie. Um, if you thought that was a bad movie, if you thought it was a good movie, I might do another review tomorrow because these are a little bit easier and, um, I'm running out of, I, I, we're at the tail end of spooky month. So, uh, let me know what you guys think. Peace guys.